locked out of your own room? I locked out of my <laughs> own room. Don't even know the code. Nobody gives me the code. You don't know the code to your own archive? Nobody tells me shit. Mark. Hi, Paul. Everybody loves when you take a guitar out of the rack and put it down and we open it up. So you got to, are you picking a it's, good one today? I'm picking a great one. And let's go. Which one are you picking? I'm picking the first bird guitar. I remember making this thing. Also, Look, no, wait a minute. To... It's in a Gibson case because there was no such thing as PRS at the time. That's, that's right. There, it we was were making cases. PRS? The idea of making guitars was outrageous. <laughs> Uh-oh, I remember this thing made for Peter Frampton. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. So did he order it from you, or did you make it for him to, like, take it to him? Mm, I got permission from him to play all his guitars. And so when I got to play them, I had an idea of what he liked. And I made it for him and, and took it to him without finish on it when he was playing at American University. And he played it and he really liked it. And I had to take it back home to finish it. And then I, when it was done, I took it to New York and showed it to him. It's interesting, the, the, the Woods Heavy, I got it from a place called Rosenzweig Lumber in New York City for the body. And the neck wood, it actually has some curl in it of all weird oh, things wow. you see has some curl in it. Yep. And uh, one of my friends was beautiful at calligraphy and wrote Handmade for Peter Frampton by Paul Reed Smith on the back in April 1976, which I was born in 56, so that'd make me 20, I guess, is what you were explaining to me earlier. Yep. But this was the first set of bird inlays. I mean, how, I put a little many... bird on the heel, which I never wanted to. I was going to ask you what Yeah, what well, that was, it was a cause... bad idea. That Look, was, uh... I did, the pearl I had wasn't big enough for the whole bird. They were piano keys, so yeah. I put two of them together. You know, and after that, I stopped making the bird so big. But I just uh, thought that the name Smith was a terrible name for guitars, so I put the bird in the headstock instead, and it turned right. out Smith means maker of things, goldsmith, silversmith, you know, so right. it, it's, it's, a, it's the right Smith. name, but something like that, yeah. So why birds? My mother was a bird watcher, Mark, yeah. and it, I never thought about it. I just, I had this guitar to make, and I needed inlays for it, and it was never even a thought. I just went down and did it. We just did it. It was it literally from thought to inlaid was so fast. Yeah. When we were kids, we would stick our, win our heads out the window in the backyard and we could tell the difference between the nightbird songs, whippoorwills, poor wills, you know, all the stuff. Um, and then at the time you could rent records the way you can take a book out of a library, but at the Smithsonian you could take a record out of the library and we'd come home with all the bird song records. Oh, wow. True story. I'm now starting to bird watch, which is w wild. The other day there was a great horn owl in my backyard. There was a couple of woodpeckers that looked like blue jays, but they weren't. Learn something new every day, but that's bird watching. And I never understood why birds worked on a guitar, but they're in everybody's backyard in a weird way. I mean, you're not, I mean, you got worms in the backyard too, but you know, and squirrels, but it, the birds are, there's something about them. Flying yeah. dinosaurs are cool. All, all squirrels look the same. So birds are much more interesting. Anyway, that's why birds, because my mother was a bird watcher and never thought about it. I never thought people would order the birds. I thought they order the moons, and once in a while they get the birds. Now the moons are history. Yeah. So how many guitars had you made at this point? I mean, we, we did the first guitar that you made. I don't know, a dozen. A dozen? Something like that. I mean, yeah. look, it has a wooden back plate, which I decided to abandon, but we're back at it. Um, it had a different way of holding... The strings, on a badass bridge, the strings go through the, the bridge and wrap around, but right. I wanted to bury the bridge and get the neck angle down, so I went through the body like a telecaster. Oh, so the through body is just because of where you wanted the bridge to be. I wanted it down on the you decks. You weren't gonna be able to access it no, to go through the I didn't want the bridge way up in the air. And, and this was where the neck came into. I thought mm -hmm. the neck needed to come in that far. Later on, For we decided, stability. Yeah, later on we decided we could stop it at the end of the pickup. And then we later did this on the, uh, the Santana models, right? Yeah. Or actually, that went all the way down. Yeah, so what happened was the piece. neck went to there, right? Mm -hmm. The neck went to there. But then I inlaid a piece of curly maple between the two pickups and then filled in. And look, if I had a bad joint, I'd fill it with a piece of inlay. If there was a, a bad joint down the middle of the guitar, I'd fill it with inlay and make right. it look pretty, you know. I was young, and I was trying to make magic guitars. Somebody did a, 
a bad repair on it at one point. I don't know who did that. It wasn't the best repair, but it, it's shape, okay. The shape's okay. But it was the set, first set of birds, you know, and some of the bird shapes stuck. That one stuck, that one stuck, that stuck, that stuck. That one got changed. Yep. That got changed a little bit. But everybody, the last one was a was an owl on a stick, and everybody said, was it a flying turtle? You know, <laughs> I, I never really could see the flying turtle, didn't really understand. But that was the first set, and I remember... It had a, well, I remember before I fretted it, it had a reverence to it. There was a, holding the neck blank was actually kind of cool. And if you look very carefully, there's no slots on the side of the neck. It was bound in, oh, yeah. in, in rosewood. So I glued a piece of rosewood on each side of the neck. Right. Again, similar to how we do the Santana models. Yeah. Well, that was kind of the thing at the time. Yeah. It has more headstock angle than we use now. Mm -hmm. It didn't have the, the heavy scoop. I hadn't done the heavy scoop yet. Yeah, the original one had PAFs in it, and they got taken out. The thing that was weird is I didn't really understand how to do the ring, so you had to cut the ring so that it went down into the scoop. Yep. Um, but that was learning, you know. So you would just grind them down, or you? No, cut them I would take a big thick ring and I would cut it until it fit. Gotcha. The saying at the time was Paul was cutting them out with his teeth, <laughs> and if I had an exacto knife, I I I I, I knew what I wanted the guitar to be made. I just didn't have the tools, the right tools to do it. Right. Seemed to turn out all right. I mean, it's a great guitar. Feels well, it awesome. It plays well. The frets are small and really low down. And, but yeah. I got the neck shape right. It's neck all the way to here and all the way to the nut. Yep. Um, I was going to ask you about that. It's the first neck it's, shape. It's very uh, uh, sharp. Going there's there's very little blending going from the headstock into the neck and the yeah, heel into the neck. I want it to be his neck as far as possible without getting bigger and right. neck all the way to the front of the thing without getting bigger. That was the first neck shape where I thought, hey, maybe I can carve necks. You know? yeah. And you, when you were making this, I, I think I remember that you would string it up before it had any finish on yeah. it and you would feel it so yeah. you were fine-tuning the I was neck shape like that. Like that. But like I said, I brought that guitar to him at American University when he was playing and he, it, it did, hadn't been finished yet, yeah. you know, but he really liked it. Peter was very cool. Uh, uh, Peter was very cool to me. I, uh, when, when you have a rock star of that caliber, I mean, at the time, he was one of the most famous musicians alive. You know, Frampton Comes Alive had just come out. And, yeah. um, they were playing stadiums, you know. It was one of the first bands to do that. And he was generous with his, you know, liking the guitar. Yeah. He didn't end up. He didn't end up playing it, but it ended up being the first bird guitar. And I got to talk to him a few years ago about it, and I, I still appreciate what he did. Yeah, yeah. I talked to him once for a while at Nam, and he seemed like a really nice guy. He's stupid smart. I, he has a vibrato that most people don't know about. He he can wiggle a string without touching the neck, and it's really cool the sound yeah. that he used to get. He, I mean, yeah, he's you know, a great player. So the first time I ever saw a rock star put a guitar on, look in the mirror, and see how it looked in the mirror. I mean, he, he wanted visually it to be cool too. You know? Right. But he was way more interested in how it was as a guitar. Yeah. A fundamentally great guitar player, and he played at Crossroads recently and just tore it to shreds. He's a great guitar player. Yeah. I only remember seeing him with Les Pauls. Yeah. Um, is that all he played? He played. He had the guitars that I got to play. When I was trying to figure out what the next shape would be, was he had an old Strat, he had an old Les Paul, and he uh, it was a three pickup Les Paul that had been toyed with. Mm -hmm. You know, look, the, that caliber of guitar player to be playing one of these things just even for a minute was an honor. Yeah. But there's the first bird guitar, and I remember, you know, well, this thing needs cool inlays, and huffing my butt down to the to the to the store and starting to draw the birds out. I remember everybody in the room th that night um, trying to get the transition between this bird and this bird from the big ones to the small ones, right? You know, mm -hmm. we, And we didn't have that bird drawn, so they drew a kite, which is a fork tail bird. So you had somebody helping you? I had some people help me. Yeah. Tim Campbell was there, a bunch of people were there. Nice. We were all working on it. It was, it was fun, it was a all of us, all buddies were in the shop trying to get the drawing right, you know, and I cut them out and put them in. Mm -hmm. the, the wood in the back had th what's called thunder checks in the wood. Can you see the cracks? Yeah. It comes from kiln drying the wood too fast. There's some thunder checks in it that I didn't really understand that the wood was going to crack over time. I, I saw the cracks, but I didn't really think that they were, 
you know, didn't think it would didn't expand. Really expand like that. Yeah, it was I remember just putting the bird on the in the heel, thinking it was a good idea, and then nah, don't do that again. <laughs> I can't even tell what kind of bird that is. It's actually. a little sparrow sitting on a stick. Oh, okay, I and can see it now. The other reason I changed the headstock is these things used to break off. If you hit them, they'd break yeah, off. Yeah, I'm really glad that didn't make it into production. That would have been so hard in so we, many ways. We would like, have figured delicate. it out. Delicate. We would have figured it but, out. But, like, can't get a barrel sander in there. Ah, we would have figured it out. I, you know, I have a few things here I want to show you. Let me just... So, Mark, these are the original jigs for after this guitar so that I could cut out with a Dremel tool the holes um, uh, for the inlays, and I would double stick tape these down and run a Dremel around them. And uh, I, I put graphite, like a liquid on them so it didn't eat into the thing. But these right. were the original jigs for putting the birds in. And Now, did, were these uh, for, for these exact birds, or well, were they for the production? Well, birds? this one because would be for these that are one. slightly different. No, that's than that's what went pretty close. That that one's dead right. Right, but, but like few, the twelve fret change. bird has the articulated feathers, which well, I couldn't cut those articulated feathers with a CNC machine. Right. So I, yeah, know, I mean it's fine detail. And in they there, would break so. off. Yep. Here's a very interesting thing. Here are the original neck jigs. Right for the neck shape. For the neck shape and exactly how I would modify it. Um, my our way and then I didn't want to wear them out so we made a set of copies out of aluminum. Right. And so it's for like the nut and yeah, the for 12 checking fret the neck and, shape and looking at it, you know. Yeah. Let me show you something else, Mark, which is really cool. That's the shape the original shape of the heel. Oh yeah. And so on the curved body this would go on there and I'd put it on there and, and draw around it, it would give me the shape of the heel, the guitar. Right. So I'd Done a template so that every single time I was carving the heel, I would you know get the yeah. right shape of it. This is the original bird inlay copyright. Oh yeah. So certificate of copyright registration, and, you know, and this was. That's cool. That's cool. How long after this guitar did you copyright it? Well, the dates on here. This was eight in eighty one. That was 81. done in seventy six. Um, so two years later. Mm, 76 to 81 is 5. Sorry, <laughs> it's an addition subtraction problem. <laughs> this is the trademark that issued for the birds. Oh, nice. In 86. And so a year, we, we went from a copyright to a trademark. Right. So, trademark means certificate of origin. It's where it came from. This indicates that the guitar was made at PRS in Maryland. So there you go. Very cool. You gonna say goodbye, Mark? Goodbye, Mark. Goodbye, Mark. See ya.